Fox Sports. We are Black Hawk. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. What a weekend it's been here in Detroit. Friday night, Jamer Condelario belted his second career walk-off home. Hysteria, jubilation, then ensued. And then it was duplicated last night when Victor Reyes scampered home with a game-winning run in a 4-3 knockout. Today, the Tigers eye the sweep, a perfect way to spend a Sunday and an ideal way to conclude a special weekend celebration of the 1968 champions. Hi everybody, alongside two-time World Series champion, Kirk Gibson, I'm Matt Shepard. John Keating will join us shortly. Hey, this is a St. Louis team that is really playing good, solid baseball. One that is playing for something, and yet Detroit's already won this weekend series. How important is that to a young team? Series, series win is good. Guardy's not wanting to concede at this point in the season, and you want to match the intensity of a playoff team. So far, so good now. You've got the series win, but why not get the sweep? All right, we've looked at homers from Candelario. Matthew Boyd was outstanding yesterday, but really, it's some of the little things this weekend that has impressed you most. Which ones? It, well, and this is the thing that Gardy likes. He likes fundamentals. He came from the Minnesota Twins. It's an evaluation period. How are you going to do the little things to win games? Victor Reyes right there. He gets on base. It's 3 2. And, and Candy gets a hit. He puts it in play. They've been pulled off it, right? Mikey Montu. Goes over the wall, makes the catch, saves the run. So really, we've scored a run, we saved a run. Greedy gives up the two-run home run. And there we got a wild pitch, and we win the game. Instead of tying the game with that run, we win the game, and that's what the, the walk-off wins. They really imprint the things that Gardy's trying to get across to his team. And they're coming across very well, and they're getting very good value in each game being played so far this weekend. For some reason, some of these better teams Detroit has been facing has brought out the best in them. They're looking for it yet again today, and they're looking for one of their best. Michael Fulmer is hoping to do what he did last time out. John Keating from the Call Sam Studios, when we return on what made him successful and the numbers that he would love to put up on a Sunday afternoon in Detroit on Fox Sports Detroit.
Strain. The only hit he allowed in his last start was a leadoff homer, but the Bernstein advantage speaks to the fact that it always starts with the starters, and there's been a good deal of angst about that, but over the last eight games, Tiger starters have a glimmering 2.66 earned run average. John Keating back in the Call Sam studio, 59 degrees at game time as we celebrate the 60s this weekend. We have found our way into the 50s. There was news today. The Tigers have called up that prospect you have heard so much about, outfielder Kristen Stewart, along with catcher Jared Saltalamakia and relief pitcher Zach Reininger. They will be available if Ron Gartenhire deems them to be needed here today. Tigers Live on Fox, or Tigers Baseball, rather, on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. Come to Comerica. And powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Watch baseball, Tigers and Cardinals, the weekend series wrap up alongside Kirk Gibson, Johnny Kane, and John Keating. I'm Matt Shepard. Here's the Cardinals batting order. It's presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Matt Adams makes his first start in the series. Matt Carpenter at the top of the lineup has been neutralized in a two for eight type of situation. Paul DeYoung only has one homer in the series, but it was a big one last night, and Marcelo Zuna has three homers in the series. Those are the only three homers he's hit in interleague play so far this season. Today's Tigers starting pitcher is Michael Fulmer, presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Yeah, Michael looking for a win. It's been a while, June 14th, since he's had a win. Uh, trying to find his form of 2016. 
Working on the fastball, and it seems to have a little more run on it. And the changeup seems a little harder than it was back there in 2016. So he's working to tweak his repertoire. He's got electric stuff. Looking to get locked in here before the season ends. First pitch of the game is wide. See what Carpenter has done in the series. Leads the National League at homers, number two in slugging and OPS. Swings through a fastball and it's one and one. You look at Michael's uh, stuff, 60% of the time fastball is 96 miles an hour, about 25 slider, and he's got the changeup as well. Caught the corner and it's one and two. Quick work of Carpenter. McLaren Health Plan brings you the Tigers starting defense. Mikey Matuk back there in left field again has had a good series. Jacoby Jones gets a start in center today. Nico Goodrum in right field. Nick's going to be DH in today. Candy and Jim Ducey on the corners. Ronnie Rodriguez and well Lugo up the middle. James McCann got the pads on for Michael Former today. Going to be blocking some balls in the dirt. Jose Martinez, this team's leading hitter at 303. Now, I don't know. I just noticed this. I noticed this before. I didn't reference it. Watch Michael Fulmer, what he does with his glove. See how he wiggles it right before? Why does he do that? I'm going to say because at some point along the way, he's trying to figure out how to get his form back. I think he's, here, here's what happens. I think he might have think thought he was tipping some pitches. Because right when he's wiggling it is when he's changing his grip. Tapper to third. That makes sense. Sure. Because uh, a hitter, that's what you do. If you're trying to pick up a tipped pitch, you're watching the glove. Many pitchers preset a pitch, so if you can, and, and so if they're going to throw something else, like D uh, Dwight Gooden used to always set his curveball. So if he threw a fastball, he had to change it. So when they change it, you try and watch and get a clue of what's going on. And I used Dwight Gooden just because he did tip his pitches. And he still didn't matter. It's also a, a rhythm thing for Fulmer. Matt Adams, this guy's at foul. Adams playing first base. Has hit safely in four of his last eight. We'll have to ask Michael why he really does it. We'll have that for you his next start. Quick work. 0 oh 2 to Adams. Time now for StatCast. AI powered by AWS. Adams primarily up the box and pull. O2 oh pitch. Smoke to center. Jones has got a beat on it. And a good inning to start for Michael Fulmer.
Grand Detroit. What do we expect to see from him? Yeah, him? 26 years old, a uh, little over a year of service, 6'4". You ever notice how all these Cardinal pitchers are 6'3", 6'4", 6'5"? Throws the change up very well, 55% fastballs, 94 plus, change up 81. So you see quite a, a 13 mile an hour variation right there. Been pretty good. He's only given up one earned run in the last three games. Tigers batting order presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Jamer Condelario, four for eight in the series. Stowell Lugo trying to snap an 0 for seven slide. He bats eighth, and Jacoby Jones makes his first appearance in the series, batting nine. Gant has not allowed an earned run in 10 straight innings. Fair ball down the first base line. Gant had to hustle over to first, and he beats Candelario for one out. Let's take a look at the Cardinals starting defense. Marcel Zuna back out there and left again. Jairo Munoz in center. Jose Martinez in right. Greg Garcia at third base. Paul DeYoung at shortstop. Kelton Wong. Scrappy, good player, does the little things at second. Matt Adams at first. John Kent chucking to Carson Kelly. New catcher today. Yeah, new catcher. What do you think about that? Ranked fourth among PCL catchers, specifically uh, with 33% caught stealing. So uh, Tigers are going to get used to him, and the Cardinals are as well. A lot of new names, a lot of new faces come up this time of the year. A lot, to, a lot on the line. Jim and Ducey's had a nice series. I mean, just one for four, but it's hit the ball pretty well. Not, it's, you don't always get rewarded for hits. And you see he's hovering right around 300. I'm telling you, man, is a left-handed stick off the bench and a versatile guy. Yeah, he's got he, good he numbers. He can help a team, can yeah, he? Oh, yeah, he's got good numbers against the breaking balls. 438 batting average this season, 14 hits. Finished August with a 329 batting average and eight extra base hits. John Gant is talking about the changeup. He'll throw it to righties and lefties. Generally, pitchers throw it to the off batter side. So if you're a righty, you throw it to the lefty. Generally, not righty on righty, or if you're a lefty, not lefty on lefty. But it is a good pitch. I never understood why not. Poke to center. Jairo Munoz comes in. And there's two down. If Detroit combines for three or more home runs in this game, bring in a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. You can find a copy of the box score in your newspaper or on the Tigers page at foxsportsdetroit.com. You mentioned Gant. This is his 23rd appearance, but 16th start. Look at there. There's the changeup grip. Right off the end of the bat, look at it diving away. Producey out front. Castellanos drills one to right center field. Is that going to find the gap? It will. Rounds first, heads to second. He'll cruise in with a two out stand up double. We really got to appreciate what he's done this year. Well, he's ready first pitch every time. Right down the middle, you wonder as good of a hitter as Nick is. He keeps getting good pitches to hit and uh, doesn't miss it. Two out double. 38th double of the year, seventh most in the American League. Just has a plan, Gibby. It looks like every time he goes to the plate, he's got an idea of what he wants to do. And he knows how to attack it, the, the path of, of which he wants the bat to go get it. Nico Goodrum with a chance to put Detroit in front. Got a piece of that. Change up 80, just a little over 80 miles an hour. You can see that uh, he throws that with little effort. We showed you the grip earlier. You saw Goodrum one for five, so on base four times though in the series with a few walks. In an 0 2 hole. Tricks him with the fastball there. We're talking about the changeup. 31% to lefties, 22 to righty, and there you see the average. So righty on righty, which most righties are afraid to throw, 100 as a batting average. That uh, would give you some confidence, wouldn't it? Yeah, I wonder why they'd be afraid to throw it.
got him looking. Castellanos threatens, but the Tigers go away in the first. Three home runs. Look at anything look familiar? All high balls. The Tigers know they have to make an adjustment, make better pitches. You hit them all out of the park. Here's how they got them out. Verhagen comes in, slide, slider, breaking ball, down in the zone. Looks like a high ball hitter. That's how you're going to have to attack him today. Now, if you get him thinking about that pitch, you can get him high and tight with some below, but you don't want to miss up out over the plate to this fella. Very hot right now. Three home runs so far in this series. He has a strange routine as he walks into the box. Smokes it to set, set a shortstop. No problem for Rodriguez. But Ozuna literally walks behind the plate, kicking his bat like a little kid would be kicking a stick on a walk before he digs in. I think if you watched. I would say at most hitters, I wouldn't say every hitter, I bet you they do close to the same thing every time they come up to the plate. Yeah. So we'll get a couple of guys here and see. We'll put them on alert. Just a habit. Uh, I think that I kind of did something when you get to the box. There's, there's something in your routine that is duplicated almost virtually every time you go up there. Paul DeYoung has one hit in the series, but it was a big one. Yesterday, 13 of his 17 homers have been on the road this year. 0 and 2 to him. This is unique. Fulmer and Gant each threw 10 pitches in the first. Each had one ball, nine strikes, and one swing and miss. Like a little cutter right there. Michael's coming out blazing. He's a uh, max effort right now. 96 miles an hour plus. Love his mentality. There was a time earlier this year where many people wondered, is he going to be able to come back? Would he want to come back and pitch at the end of the year? He couldn't wait to get back on the mound for Detroit. Absolutely. He's uh, had the injury. He's trying to prove he's healthy now. Where was that? <laughs> Counts full. Thought he had DeYoung looking. That's what Nico's saying. Where's that? Yeah, right. Payoff pitch. To short, Rodriguez. Smooth. Two down. As you enjoy a Miller Lite, look forward to the whole true moment later on in today's game. It was Colton Wong.
Let's uh, look at our, Lance, our umpire report. Lance Parrott behind the plate. Top five pitcher friendly umpire expands a little bit. More low strikes to the lefties. Outside corners to the righties. Michael had a good outing in his last start with Lance Barrett behind the plate. So what does that mean, pitcher friendly? That means it, I think they call it, it's two inches off the plate or three inches off the plate. It's still a correct call for an umpire. So it would mean that he would call most of those strikes. Another solid inning for Fulmer. Six up, six down. Defense. He knew his power. That's on Harrison Bader in the fifth inning. Up and over. Took a run away. A big one as it proved the Tigers needed to come back. Matt Boyd liked it. With the timing of the jump. So difficult. Isn't it? I mean, look, you played out there. You know what it's like. What's the I, hardest part of a play like that? Because he made it look easy. I would have tried to run through the wall <laughs> to catch it. I'm sure you would have. That was the biggest the problem. Uh, it's you know just know where you're at. You have it takes a lot of practice. You have to understand. Sometimes you can't see. You look, but then you have to see with your feet. You got to know that if you're running straight into the wall, it's two steps to the wall. When you hit the track, you can feel the gravel. Is it three steps? Is it two steps? Is it one and a half? If you're angling, you have to know it's going to be a little farther. You have to filter oh. all that in while you're on the fly, and then you see the fence coming up. You know, you get a little different sensation. But Mikey, good job last night. Sure did. Look, he's got seven homers in the last 20 games. That catch right there probably felt just as good as those home runs. Tapper to short, De Jong on the run and accurate. Stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game where we will select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game as presented by McDonald's. So we were talking in the open and we keep saying little things. We talk about Mikey. So what does that do? I think the score was 3-1 at the time. He keeps it 3-1. If he doesn't make the catch, it's 3-2. Now we get to the ninth inning. They've got one on. Greeny gives up a two-run home run. Now it's 4-3. They're up. We score that run, and it's only 4-4. So Mikey taking that away with, through his technique and his hard work gives the Tigers. You know they didn't. You don't want to give up the home run, but it only made it 3-3. Now, if you score, you win. You walk them off, and that's uh, an example of it. Yeah, but sometimes it does more than that. It's not just a run-saving catch. It, there, there's something about a mentality. There's something about momentum. There's something about belief as well, right? I mean, that is contagious. Did you see the emotion from Matt Boyd? Yeah. Yeah, he put him in a really good frame of mind. Now he gives up the home run. He's maybe you're right. It puts him in a different, different, different place, more of a negative place. Maybe he starts aiming the ball. 
James McCann looking for his first hit of the series and trying to snap out of an 0 for 4 slide. The thing I like most about visiting with James McCann before the game, though, is the positivity that he relays on Very. a regular basis. Yes. Yeah. Pounded to left field. Ozuna's back at the edge of the warning track, and the wind helped it out a little bit. It seems like it's not carrying that way. The wind is blowing in, and the air seems to be a little thick so far. Here's Ronnie Rodriguez. Gibby's ram picked the yeah, stick. Yeah, my guy. When Ronnie has set Shep up, <laughs> he tried to talk me into the Gooch. Right, look at how tight that Greg Garcia is playing at third base. He, he walks in from the middle of the bag just in case there's a two out attempt of a bunt and, and Detroit's done such a good job of keeping St. Louis defenders on their toes a little bit in this series. Pressure. Yeah. Always keep the pressure on. I mean you know no matter what you do whether it's your everyday life or just certain things in the game that pressure you know you don't mind it at first but then as it intensifies it works on the psyche. One and two to Rodriguez. That's what Ron Gardner Harris preached, though. I mean, he, you talked it really well in the open today about the little things. Well, Garden Hire is trying to make sure his team is paying attention to those little things. Fundamentally sound. There's still some things he wants to see done. And he and his staff are, are going over vigorously the, the Tigers quote unquote handbook how they're going to do things. Going to change it even yeah. more so than yeah. it has been. Yeah. And I, I love that about it. I mean he was talking to me earlier today about little things like when the ball's on the ground you pick it up with your bare hand instead of your glove. You know if it gets away from you pick it up with your hand. It saves you that step. It may sound simple to most but sometimes players get in certain routines and maybe even bad habits that need to be corrected. Well we're going to get into something next inning that uh, most people don't talk about but I'm I know Gardy does and uh, actually I shared a comment with Nicholas Castellanos uh, because he shared a comment with me and I should wear some he gave me a comment I gave him a comment and Gardy's a stickler for these types of things so. We'll talk about that next inning or so. And of course, he learned that from Tom Kelly. TK. I mean, I mean, he he told me a story earlier today that Tom Kelly once at a spring training game stopped the middle of the game, went out, took his player, and wanted him and positioned him where he wanted him to be and what he's supposed to do on a certain play, right in the middle of a preseason game. It's awesome. Well, TK, he watches the games today. He still looks at it in the same eye. Off speed. Got him swinging. Stay with us. Kirk Gibson talks about the little things that win games and how the Tigers are trying to make that part of their culture. That is next as Tigers baseball rolls on on a Sunday afternoon.
We have a man on second. Aaron throw. Look at this. Right there catching. Then they walk Nick. Another great play. And they get the out. No run scored. So that's the example of the Cardinals doing it the right way. That is the Cardinals way. That saved them a run. Had he not been there. I think it was Candy that was on on, uh, on second. He would have scored easily. Yeah. And we would have had a man on third probably second or third with one out or no outs. It's paying attention to the scenario the situation. Now here's an example in Chicago we're going to we're going to come up with we get another foul ball here. And uh, Nick Castellanos and I just happened to I I just happened to walk into the clubhouse and he asked me what was on the side of my face. I had something burned off for skin you know deal. Yeah. And uh, he gave me some advice. I said good advice and then I gave him some advice. Watch this here. There's an errant throw here. Here's Nick coming in a little, little late. Now we're going to show you another view. Look at stop it. See Nick standing there. Oh yeah. He adds a little late and I forced us to miss a pitch here. I'm sorry. That's all right. We'll tap her to third. No problem. Is that. Is that something that gets lost because of a season or because how a team is playing in a season do you think well here was my comment I mean he, he gave me his comment right he said you need to wear sunscreen I said you're right and I said I've got one for you here's the ground ball out that we missed and I said I got one for you okay and I have a good relationship with Nick he wants to be the best he can be he wants to be a world champion so I said you doesn't still want mind to be being coached doesn't yeah. mind. he can take criticism you yeah. want it it wasn't even criticism it was just to point something out you, do you want to look at this? And so I showed him. And as soon as I started showing him, he said, I, I, did, I didn't move early enough. You got to be there where Wong was. You got to be there. You know why it wasn't? Because he'd been playing a lot, and they were up 10 to 10 nothing at the time. Right. That was that blowout. Win, right. This one. Punch to left. No problem for Mikey Mata. Quick, two quick outs here in the third. But what happens is it's 10 nothing. You let your guard down a little bit. That guy scores. And now all of a sudden it's 10-9. And it's a different game. You just you want to do the little things, do the things that you can control. And that way you keep them down. You give them less opportunity to come back or to beat you. Well, you want to create good habits, too. Yeah. Right? And, and we're trying to we have a time frame to get this message. And this is by no means critical. Nick is a great player. He's had a great year. And he, trust me, he had no problem with it at all. He. Like he had me. I didn't need more sunscreen. I had him. I mean, it's sad that we're talking about sunscreen. <laughs> no, but me. it's a good it's a good uh, relationship that you two have. And, and I love the feedback you each get. Well, it, by the way, that's just the second fastball out of the zone by Michael Former. He's done 28, 26 of them strikes. Go ahead. The one thing we didn't put in there, Nick's been busting his tail ever since that day backing up. OK, now he it was just a little reminder. And, that's what teammates need to do, you know. He's like, the st first step is to establish the, I guess, the standard in your team, which is Gardy's trying to do, and then you regulate each other. Little pop up behind first. No problem for Jim Adusi and Michael Fulmer, early on anyway. Has it on cruise control.
and that man, our old friend Justin Verlander, back at Comerica Park tomorrow night. And it will be uh, sensational, I think, to see the reaction he gets from Tiger fans as he'll get the ball against what we believe to be a Francisco Liriano start. Uh, Ron Gardenhire making mention of the fact this morning that they're going to go to a six-man rotation and sort of stretch out some of the arms that he has at his disposal. And we'll see if any of them, any more, come up from Toledo now that their season is done. Jeff, give me. All right, Keats, thanks very much. Yeah, Justin Verlander, remember last time he pitched against the Tigers, a lot of strikeouts, but a lot of home runs allowed, too. Four. He's got a 3.92 ERA in his last five. But still, that Houston team, I still think, best team in the American League until someone knocks him off. As Dewell Lugo, Jacoby Jones, and Jamer Condelario are due up here in the third. So, a couple things just uh, so far. What do, we th what, what do we know about John Gant? He's around the plate. What pitch is he like? Really loves his change up. Remember, we took him out saying he throws it to lefties or righties. Yeah. 3 2 count. Ronnie Rodriguez, change up. It's not to say you have to look for it, but you have to shorten up your swing. This is another one of the little things that Ron Gardner is preaching to the choir on a daily basis. You just got to shorten up. That's a good change up. We, we showed the grip. We'll show it again when we get it. He's got good action. He keeps it down. Two and two to Lugo, who has a couple of three hit games already, but is 0 for 7 in the series. And you talked about shortening your swing. That's something Rodden Gardenhire loves about Dewell Lugo. What he's been able to do this season, not just with the Tigers, but shorten his swing. That one was close, and Gant wanted it. Instead, it's full. Little inconsistency down at the bottom here. You saw the catcher Kelly really pull it up. Walked him. Well, Lugo obviously a call up earlier in the year. And again, earlier this month. Well, these three men have joined the Tigers as well. Zach Reininger out of the bullpen. Jared Saltalamaki. Good to see a familiar face back with the Tigers and everybody wants to know about Kristen Stewart and for good reason 25 bombs this year 80 runs driven in what a great young kid and had a lot of fun talking with him earlier today just thrilled excited beyond belief to be up here yeah, Toledo got eliminated last night didn't take him long to get here did it he's going on two and a half hours sleep he told me so oh, Jones sounds like admitted. fun yeah. but he said look I'm ready to compete I want to help this team win every chance I can um, but it, it, he has been helped by your friend Gene Roof. He's been helped by Phil Clark, who's in, been with the Tigers all season long, who's had him the last couple of years. Um, Doug Mankiewicz did wonders for him at Toledo. And Ron Gardner likes the scouting report he's gotten from Kristen Stewart. When he talked with Doug Mankiewicz, said he's gotten a lot better in left field. He's worked really hard on that part of his game. He's a strong kid. And Ron Gardner's message to him is this. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, that's, that's what got you here. It takes time. Just watch what's going on. Implement. Take what you need. Discard what you don't. Jones drills one to left. Way back. Does that have distance? No, it doesn't. That one was held up in the wind. Man, that is. He really put a charge into that one. Yeah, his ball's really getting knocked down to left field. Looked like right off the bat he might have something, but uh, got knocked down. Like I say, usually those balls, they'll either take off with the backspin. That wind out there is just pushing it right down. So that'll bring up Jamer Condelaria. Grounded out in the first. Kristen Stewart can lean on guys like Candelario to a certain extent. I mean, he'll be picking the brains of Victor Martinez for sure, and guys who've been around for a while, but it does to help to have some guys around your age who've been able to experience it all season long, don't you think, Gibby? Oh, absolutely. You need to feel comfortable, and any way you look at it, when you're a rookie, they have interesting ways of making you feel comfortable. Some, you know, it's not hazing. It's just ribbing. It's a little good fun. 
but uh, they just want you to know they love you and uh, you know sometimes you you do some of those things and then you're going to spend a lot of time around the batting cage obviously on the field in the locker room it's a rite of passage don't you think yeah this clubhouse will help them ease the transition because it's a very loose clubhouse and then in a year or two he'll be doing it to the guys wow. coming up sure Ron Gardenhart told you and I that I'm excited to watch him play and everybody is really everybody in Detroit has talked about him I mean there are others Daz Cameron for sure and of course the pitching staff but from a position player standpoint Stewart's been the topic of discussion I think next spring training you're going to see some new faces that are exciting. Well they did think according to Garden Hire, they did think about bringing him over to camp and give him a longer look but they look the, the patience word is very difficult for most of us in sports to accept but the Tigers are doing their very best to do just that with a talented young player like that. Don't want to rush him if you don't have to. Kind of drops on the throw over. You know me, I'm always looking at what's going on on the throwovers. Well, you're also has your stopwatch out. I'm digging for it right now. All right. Off speed makes it two and two. Got my trusty bag here with all my utensils in there. Sometimes you, <laughs> you lose sight of the stopwatch, do you? Just found a battery. No stop what's yet. I've told you, you can use your phone, you can use your, your watch, but you're old school in that regard. Well, the watch is much more accurate. I'm waiting for, for you to pull out your whistle, too. <laughs> One of these days, that's going to happen. The other day, I pulled out <laughs> clippers. Ooh. Full count now. Scan, he, he's all around the plate, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is. Got to believe he's got to watch this change up. Teams batting just 231 against him this year. Five career starts in interleague competition for John Gann. You send him? Yes. You? I don't think I would. Just the matchup, the changeup. Changeup's not a bad pitch to run on, is it? Well, it's not, but it's a swing and miss pitch. There he goes. He's gone. And a line drive right at Adams. Wouldn't have mattered if he didn't go. He probably still would have got him. You're watching Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire.
through three innings. 22 of the 31 have been for strikes. Back to the top of the order for St. Louis. So second look at Michael Fulmer. And oftentimes this is really the initial challenge for any starter. When someone gets a second look at you. Carpenter, the active leader in interleague slugging and OPS. Gibby loves the old school look. No batting gloves. Well, if it works for you, yeah. the thing about um, the regular leather gloves, you have to switch them fairly often. I, I prefer them to be tight. You know, they'll stretch out quite a bit, especially if you use tire. Gonna get some calluses on your hand there. Look, he's off the edge there. Stroke to first and a nice play by Aduzzi. Well defended. Right place at the right time. A good pre pitch. Look, it looks like it's going to go into right field. Snags it. The big old first baseman's glove right in the webbing. Does help, doesn't it? Michael Fulmer cracked a smile. Jim Aducey does the same, although Aducey's a really reserved guy. Doesn't say a lot. Here's Jose Martinez, the team leader in average and RBIs. I think uh, Aducey's sneaky, kind of funny. I think he is too. Yeah. yeah. Dry sense of humor. Just think around maybe us. I think he's maybe a little different. A little but reserved, sure. Yeah. Very likable, hardworking, oh, and he yeah. can hit. Yeah, very likable guy. Can hit, I'm telling you. He puts the bat on the ball. Yeah, enjoyed the storytelling you and Dan Petrie had in the booth before the game about Dave Rosema, your good friend, oh, friend of he, ours. Oh, no. he, he was boisterous, and, and he was the life of the party. Jim Aducey can be funny, but not, not the same way, right? Well, I don't know, but I just said my I have a sneaky suspicion he can be. What's the word? Just dry. Second strikeout for Michael Fulmer. Here's the 1 800 call Sam call of the game. St. Louis Cardinals innings one through three this series hits three out of 30 at bats. Extra base hits are down, only one walk and 13 Ks. That's a good job by the Tigers working that part of the lineup. That's where you, the, any team would expect production from. So far, Tigers have held them down. Yeah, held them down against what we consider to be a very good St. Louis team that has now dropped five games back of the Cubs in the Central Division. But more importantly, two and a half back of Milwaukee in the wild card. They have the number two wild card. Dodgers are a game back of St. Louis for that second wild card. Arizona's within two, and the Phillies are within three and a half. These are big games for the Cardinals. Just watching uh, Michael Fulmer today. He's really working really quickly. And I want to, seems like he may be doing a little something differently with his windup. Got Matt Adams looking. Back to back K's to finish the fourth. 97. And Fulmer's in a groove.
Noble, Mike Trout, his o OPS and OVP are out of this world. But last night, what he did against the Chicago White Sox, five for five, two more bombs. I don't know about you, Gibby. Love watching that dude play. Really yeah, do. I agree. And everything I hear from his manager, Mike Sosha. Good friend of yours. Uh, he says he's everything you'd like about a player. Well, as a teammate and a player is what you're referring to, right? Absolutely. He is a teammate, does everything right, very humble, as good as he is. Like, I don't know if you'd call it being criticized, but, um, you know, they thought maybe he could help baseball. How, how could I word this? They thought that he could put more time into his brand. Yeah. He, he wants to. He wants to play baseball. And he also wants to spend the offseason with his family. There's nothing wrong with that. By the way, that was his 14th career multi-homer game and fourth this season. Not necessarily viewed as a guy who is a home run hitter. Even though I think he is. It's a 12-3 final last night for the Angels over the White Sox in case it mattered to you. But there are certain players, I think, whether they're on your team or not, you just enjoy watching play. He's got a 314 average. He's got an OBP of 485, and he's got a slugging of 623 right now. It's up there. I'd take it. Plus, he's a hell of a center fielder. He does, he, stays he, he does it all. Everything. There's really nothing he can do. Ducey popped out to center his first time up. Ducey Castellanos in good room here in the fourth for Detroit. Moving the feet two and two. Yeah when you get those as an off speed pitch only 75 miles an hour you say man I should let that hit me but your reaction takes you away from it. Yeah. Well if it's at your shoulders you'll see some guys leaning in there. It's easier said than done. Nice backhand play by Wong on a broken back grounder and there's one down. Hey Tiger fans if you can't catch the games on TV you can stream them live on your mobile device with the Fox Sports app. Download the Fox Sports app and take Fox Sports Detroit and Tigers baseball with you. It's made available by Oakland University. So if you were to get hit by a pitch where do you think the best spot to be hit would be? Where would you if you get to get hit where would you think the best spot to get hit would be? Backside. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Were you going to say the leg? Were you going to say the arm? Where? No, that I was going to say the the bottom. You're, you're the, the uh, yeah. You're the one who's you're the one who's had it happen. Not in the choppers. No, nothing around the head. Nick Castellanos with his 38th double of the year on the very first pitch he saw from John Gant. Back in the first, but was left stranded. Gant with a 1.2 whip. Walks, hits per inning pitched coming into the game today. Yeah, Off he's, speed. He's, oh, definitely, two one. Yeah, he's definitely got an idea. You see every pitch. It's just right there. Just either on the plate, just either off the plate. Three and one to Nicholas Castellanos. Three for seven in the series for Castellanos. It's Jordan Zimmerman going over there with uh, Daniel Norris. Talking about grips. Just. Oh. Grips, pressure. See, they, they look right where they put each fingers and where the pressure goes. It's a daily occurrence for pitchers. That's what baseball allows. Long conversations about the game itself. Gant wins that matchup with Castellanos. 
Oh, Celebrate geez. Irish Heritage Night at Comerica Park on Friday, September 21st, when the Tigers host the Royals at 710. Purchase a special themed event package that includes a game ticket, Detroit Tigers Irish Heritage Night hat, and a donation to the United Irish Societies. For more information, visit tigers.com. Another change up there. John Gant with three strikeouts. His first of the day was against Nico Goodrum. Lays down a bunt. Looks like a good one. Going to be a tough play, and they're not going to get him. Oh, better get back. Guess who's there? Colton Wong back in the play up. On cue with the little things that matter in sports. It is an infield hit for Nico Goodrum. Well, Gary Garcia, third baseman, calls off the pitcher, John Gant. Good, good job, but he just has to throw really quick. You can see that ball runs on him, and there's Colt one, just like he was the other night. You've got to be in the position right there. If you don't start right away, you don't get there. Otherwise, Nico Goodrum is on second base at least. Matuk falls it away. Wong, by the way, leads Major League Base second or Major League Base uh, second baseman in uh, ultimate zone rating and defensive runs against. So maybe it shouldn't surprise us all that much. Hey, just uh, getting back to these way you manufacture runs. Reyes has done a real good job of doing the bunting. And there you see Nico doing the bunting. You know, you think two outs you shouldn't bunt. Well, it led to two runs um, when Reyes did it. Just got to keep the pressure on these pitchers. Getting on base is not as luxurious as nobody on base. Well, think about how that changes this entire approach by John Gant. If Nico Goodrum's on second base, a base hit gives Detroit a run with the speed of Nico Goodrum. That play, though simple as it may seem, not in the box score, might not even be written about. The backup you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, right. Yeah. I've noticed John Gant has that different pause too when runners are on first base before he'll either go home or go to first base. Makes it difficult to time him up, doesn't it? Yeah, well, every time he's thrown over, he seems to hold it a long time. He's got like a little balk move where he kind of bends his both knees and then throws over. Ah, took follows it back. Take a look. Watch those knees. He bends them. You're always studying what moves first. If he's going home, what does he do? If he's coming to first, what does he do? There goes Goodrum. Stolen. Well, I tell you, that was a good throw and a good tag. But Nico had a great jump. Again, this is what the two out bunt can do for you. You missed him totally here. Now you got a guy on second, two down. They said, as you said, gives the Tigers a run. 12th stolen bag of the year for Nico Goodrum. I loved where he stole the bag, where he went outside, fur furthest edge. Stayed low. Yeah. But Monto can't bring him home. Right to the change. It's been a pitcher's duel. Michael Fulmer, for the first time this year, has been perfect through four. He's ready for the fifth on Fox Sports Detroit after this.
Menards brings you the big money encounter. Michael Fulmer has been around the plate all day long. He's kicked it up at about 96 per, and he's got a lot of swings and misses so far through four. Very aggressive, Michael Fulmer. All business. Marcelo Zuna, Paul DeYoung, Colton Wong do up the four, five, and six hitters against Michael Fulmer. Three Ks on the day so far. Ozuna always dangerous. Big power. 21 bombs, 75 runs driven in. Eight homers in his last 13. One and two to him. Good slider there. Fastballs are around 96, 97. Sliders about 86, 87, 88. His slider, or his changeup has become a little harder over the last couple of years. More importantly, Michael Fulmer has been ahead in the count, seemingly all day long. 46 total pitches, 33 strikes. It's a pretty good ratio. It's an outstanding ratio. Got to be over 70%. And we were talking yesterday, actually, with Dan when he was in here. Any any uh, evaluators think a pitcher should be able to throw 70% strikes? I I say in the bullpen. I think when you get on the mound, good good pitch there. Three straight strikeouts for Michael Fulmer. Let's look at Michael through four. Very very good. Come out. Picking up where he left off right here leads the game off. Matt Carpenter, very good hitter, number two hitter. And then Matt, look at all the takes. These guys are looking. He means he's got late movement on the ball, showing the fastball wherever he wants it. He's got sliders been going. And four through four innings, excellent. No runs, three strikeouts, no walks. Another first pitch strike from Michael Fulmer. Got guys talking on the bench. See yeah. that? Shaking his head. Going, what in the world is going on? You see it, 97 mile an hour right there. When you see guys taking pitches all the time like that, it means you got to guess, and there's the breakdown of the inning. It's a beautiful line, isn't it? Show that again, fellas. 10, 10. I mean, you're not you're not throwing more than 11 pitches in an inning. I know it's early, but yeah, that lets you that's go good late. looking right there. Yeah, 51 so far. Nine of 14 first pitch strikes. How does he lay off that? I don't know. You tell me. That's a little cutter. Fastball's 96, 97. Cutter's 89, 91. That's Minnie's fastball. Tapper to third. No problem for Candelario. Good slider. See what Colton Wong has in store in his second meeting with Michael Fulmer. Flew out to the left his first time up to end the second. This guy puts the bat on the ball, not, not a ton of power. We've been talking a lot about his defensive efficiency and what he does with the backups. He's shown it in this series. Had a double and a walk Friday night in his first appearance since being activated after a 10 day DL stint. Oh. Two and one. Okay, both pitchers dominating the crowd, just kind of sitting here, everybody's waiting for something to happen, but the Domination by the two fellows on the mound is overtaking this game so far. He and James McCann are lockstep, aren't they? Now two and two. 
Swing for the fences at Comerica Park during fantasy batting practice. Experience over three hours of big league fun, shagging fly balls, playing catch on the field, taking swings off former Tiger Dave Rosema. Space is still available for this Friday at 7. For tickets, go to tigers.com slash BP. Ask Rosie for the curveball, the sidearm bow locker. No, I mean, he got... He has a lot of fun doing that, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I know. We went to, he went to Texas in 85. I faced him three times. What do you, how many hits do you think I got? Three. Hit three rockets off him, right? <laughs> 0 for 3. This is a rocket to right, but right at Goodrum. Michael Fulmer is perfect through five. He is dealing on a Sunday afternoon. Live pregame, and now Brock Guthridge doing a heck of a job so far as a 10th round pick this year. Did turn down some Division I football. Could have played at NC State, but instead chose to go the route of professional baseball. And his numbers so far in the minors very impressive. 326 average. See that on base up there. 19 stolen bases. Not all those youngsters to follow. He's a very aggressive, intense player. So he's got a lot of makeup. Yeah, you've seen Deathridge play? I have, I did not see him. I've read some of the reports and heard some of the chatter. I know many of the Tiger instructors and um, their scouts and scouts from other teams. James McCann scalds one to center. Back is Munoz and makes a nice grab. Johnny Kane is with us on this Sunday afternoon about a, another person who is high on the Tigers list in the farm system. Johnny? Oh man, what a great day. I'm with uh, Yolanda and Anthony Stewart, the mother of the newest Tigers call up, Kristen Stewart. And I understand that um, you got a pretty interesting story. He said you were the first person he called and that you screamed, so I won't ask you. Yes, actually... definitely. <laughs> but how cool was that moment? Kind of take us through how last night played out. Well, of course, we were watching the game, which was the postseason, uh, the, the playoffs. For the Mudheads, yeah? Yes. So I told my husband, I said, oh wow, I said they lost. And so I said, okay. I said, well, I guess we will be here for Chris, but we didn't know when. So my husband went downstairs and I stayed upstairs and I was by my phone and I saw the phone. I said, oh, it's Chris. So I picked up the phone. He said, mom, he said, you know, he said, just go ahead and make your reservations. You're going to Detroit. And I was like, <laughs> I was so excited. I, I was so excited for him because just like I told you, um, from T-ball all the way up now to this point, he has really, really has put a lot in, and he has done very well. He stayed focused, and um, it's, it's just a blessing that we are here today. It's an absolute blessing. Anthony, when you look at your son, who's going to be the everyday left fielder here moving forward, how proud are you of your son to get this opportunity with all he's put in? 
Very proud. I mean, he worked really hard. Um, and most importantly, we always taught him not to let his high get too high or his low get too low, but to learn to stay even keel, and that way he can learn how to take the good along with the bad. And he's worked really hard, and he's having fun. And that most of things, we tell him to stay focused and try to concentrate on having fun and make the game and enjoy the game as long as he can. Beautiful thing. Hey, great to have you here in Detroit. We look forward to watching your boy play, as all the Tigers do as well. Anthony and Yolanda Stewart, the parents of Christian Stewart, the latest Tigers call-up. We're back after a short break. by Bell Tire. For tires and auto service, everybody needs a Bell Tire guy. And by Chevrolet, it's the Chevy Labor Day sales event right out the summer in a new Chevrolet. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. What an awesome, awesome ceremony yesterday. Al Kaline, Denny McLean, Willie Horton, John Hiller, Mickey Lolich celebrating the 68 champions. Boy, like Gibby said it Friday night, the Tigers have done such a fantastic job this year of commemorating important days. Jack Morris Day, Alan Trammell Day, the 68 champions. There's number six on the wall, Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline, one of the greatest players in the history of the game. And Michael Fulmer continues to impress. Well, they both do. This is uh, who's going to blink first. I was just looking at Gant. They, his top's been 97 pitches. Michael Fulmer's gone 110. They're both uh, in a heck of a pitcher's duel right now. Love it. I think that's the beauty of baseball, don't you, Gibby? You don't need to score a lot of runs to really appreciate what's going on in the field. Well, and if you have this type of talent on the on the field, it's a totally different game, totally different mode. When there's when it's tough to score offensively off these two gentlemen tonight. Yeah, it's tough to appreciate a low-scoring basketball game, and I would argue it's tough to appreciate a low-scoring football game. Seven, six games in football aren't all that entertaining. A 0-0 game like this is very entertaining. High and tight to Munoz. It's full. But they're very, you know, it's like uh, a tight football game is very physical. A tight basketball game is very, it's like clutch and grab. In the baseball, you know, right now there's, there's a tension about making a play first base runner of the day for St. Louis. Let's take a look at our Xfinity high speed pitch. 98 for Michael. 88 to low. He's he's bringing it pretty good. 98. Now you notice when he misses a lot of it has been on his glove side. The left handed batter's box side. Has it missed a lot to the right to his arm side. Thought we might get the a chance at the first perfect game in Tigers history and we won't with that leadoff sixth inning walk to Jairo Munoz Munoz Greg Garcia stands in he's the third baseman who flew out to left in his first at bat.
So I, I use arm side glove side a lot. So it's just what it means. So if anything on this side of the plate right here would be arm. This would be this side over here would be glove. It's just easy easy as it's just a terminology. There goes the runner a pitch out. And McCann wipes him out. Tigers are on top of it. So now you're the manager in the other dugout in St. Louis the dugout you say how do they know that right do they got her signs. Look at see Michael Fulmer go into the dugout and point into the dugout. So that was called from either Ron Garden hire or maybe Steve Little who handles the catchers. To a pitch to Garcia. Sliced foul. So look at here. I mean, the game's going along, and out of nowhere, we pitch out, okay? Mm -hmm. So they got somebody's got something. This is good scouting. McCann makes a great throw. It's right on the money. Watch Fulmer. Points right into the dugout. <laughs> great catch, Gibby. Didn't even notice that. That's how team, that's good teamwork there. It's a really good staff, man. It really is. Attention to detail. Yep. Constant coaching. Love it. Ron Gardenhire, by the way, his first ever hit came off a former St. Louis pitcher. Who do you think it was? I'll give you a hint. Hall of Famer. Reliever. Heck. Nope. Bruce Souter. Oh boy. Yeah, Eck was. He said in that game. So he, he said his first game he played in was at the Astrodome in Houston. And he didn't have a baseball cap. So guess what the clubhouse manager did? What did he do? Went up and bought him an adjustable cap from the concession stand. And he played with an adjustable cap. He also did not have. AstroTurf shoes. He had spikes. So he had to borrow Rusty Staub's shoes and have an adjustable cap. <laughs> Welcome to the big leagues. Yeah. But you know, many guys wear spikes on turf back in the day. Yeah. Carson Kelly's the catcher for St. Louis today. It's still trying to get used to. No Yadier Molina, as you see, Michael Fulmer has pitch counts going up a little bit in the yeah, last two weathered innings. the last couple of innings with a little bit higher pitch count. So if you're St. Louis right now, are you afraid to put a sign on? I'm cautious for sure. I got to change him. There's one punch through the right side. First base hit of the day for the Cardinals, and it comes from the number nine hitter Carson Kelly. That Kelly's. Got a good arm. He's swinging a good bat today. Crowd recognizes that the no hitter is now lost. Uh, ovation from Michael Fulmer. Well deserved. Now, here you go. You've been cruising all game. First and second. Nobody out. And a do Matt Carpenter, the best hitter on the team up. So you're going to have to mix it up. But I think those last two were. His fastball, he walked Garcia on the fastball, gave up the hit to Kelly on the fastball. How about that, huh? And Kelly's third hit as a major leaguer. And he breaks up the no hitter. This is when you got to mix all pitches in. Got to be good pitches. Change up might have to get mixed in there. It's one thing losing the perfect game with a walk, another thing losing a no hitter. To the single. Now you want to make sure you don't lose the shutout, right? I mean, that's the mindset. Bear down. Let's get a ground ball, twist it, and get out of it. Just slow down a little bit, work your way through it. Find a way to get out of here with no or minimal damage. Skies one to left. Two out. 
Now Garcia was down there at second base. I don't know if anybody else caught that. He's thinking about going. Trying to time Michael up. Trying to distract. Watching down there at second base. Trying to remember they got the bag yesterday. So you got to manage that. Jose Martinez looking for his first hit in the series. 0 for 10. Against Detroit this weekend. Two down and a couple of runners on. Hammer to center, but Jones is right there. Michael Fulmer allows some traffic on the base pass, but nothing to show for the Cardinals. He's been pretty good too as well holding the Tigers down only two hits no runs at this point He's got an idea what he does Change up has been a good pitch look at there see it diving That's hard to hit all that action all that deception Two very good pitchers very young pitchers on the mound today. How have they been similar? You know they've just been in command uh, ahead in the count throwing the ball where they want to throw it they're using the Michael Fulmer has used his fastball today probably is good. Look at that changeup. And uh, Gant, I think the changeup's been the pitch that the Tigers have been not been able to solve. And when you're looking for that, the fastball he's placing and locating becomes very, very dominating. I don't know if this matters, but both have worked exceptionally quick. I suppose you would. When you get in that type of groove. Yeah, when you feel good like that, yeah. absolutely. Oh, oh, what a grab. It's short by DeYoung. Timed it perfectly. Second time that Jacoby Jones has been robbed. Missile. Yeah. That's not even fair. You do everything right. Here's a guy, sometimes when you're throwing the ball good, it's. A little bit of luck involved too. That could have been anywhere else, a foot away. And Jacoby's got a double. He's well, you, ready to get going. Yeah, he'd love to have him on base too, just because of the speed, the pressure he puts on the defense. 109, 109 miles per hour off the stick of Jacoby Jones. He hit it well in the third when he skied one oh. to left. Remember? Yeah. He, I called it a line L7. Hit it very well. Got knocked down by the wind. Condelario did the same. Hit a bullet to Matt Adams last time up. Turned into a double play. Here's another changeup. This grip is more like a screwball almost.
talking with Jamer Candelario before the game and just revisiting our conversation from Friday prior to first pitch when he talked about playing against these teams the Cubs the Yankees the Cardinals who have so much on the line and how exciting it is how much more enjoyable it can be that wasn't enjoyable at all look where the target is look what he wants to throw the ball look where it goes right there he wants it at the top of the zone same height where he wants it. There you see four seamer grip still has run on it. Just two hits and only three base runners allowed by John Gant today. So we've talked a lot about Michael Fulmer and for good reason but John Gant deserves an awful lot of credit too for what he's done so far. Well pitch wise coming into this inning Michael had less than Gant. But both very, very low. Gant came over from Atlanta with another right handed pitcher by the name of Chris Ellis and an infielder, Luke Dykstra, for Jaime Garcia. Well, I guarantee you they like what they got. Again, look at St. Louis's. The guys they throw out there in the mound, they're starters. They have a, a look about themselves. Uh, profile tall. The Ducci goes down. 16 straight without an earned run against John Gant for the last couple of games. Houston Astros tomorrow at a new game time of 6 10 p.m. Great seats are still available for tickets. Call 866 66 Tiger or go to tigers.com. That is a fun ball club to watch without question. Justin Verlander scheduled for Houston. And we've got, we've got some a visitor with us. So they must and the, have some yeah. seeds out there or something. Yeah, the crowd has recognized it. Seems like he's done this before. He's got his own game. He runs the wrong way. Yeah, I think so. He's he's running to first, like you know, there was a foul ball while he was trying to steal second. Tell you, don't reach down there and grab it. No, thing. no, no. Use your glove, right? No. Jim yeah. Aducey, what's up? How you doing, man? All right, now he's in foul territory. He'll be back. Walk him over there behind the tarp. I'll guarantee he hasn't stored anything in on, the, on this grass. Heather Nabosny and her crew would make sure of that. Matt Adams leads off the seventh for St. Louis. Adams, Ozuna, and DeYoung. Look, it's coming to the dugout. Watch these guys run. Yeah, the Cardinals are just wondering 
They got some sunflower seeds they could give him. Yep. Looks like he's been in a scrap too, Gibby. He's got that uh, a little bit of a scar on the right side. Now he's going down the foul line. This is not a goose like situation, is it? I hope not. Like we saw earlier this year. Going out the gate down there, hopefully. Got more people watching the squirrel. Michael Fulmer ready to deliver his 81st pitch of the day. And another strikeout for Fulmer, his fifth. That's an explosive fastball. Still 96 miles an hour. And Adams having a hard time catching up. See that ball just tail right at the end. You can tell by the swings. Kids taking pictures and video of a squirrel and they could probably see one in their own front yard when they get home. <laughs> they usually have trees to go up. You know how you catch those right Gibby. You and I just bring our dogs to the ballpark. I'll chase it down. Well there are many ways to. Don't want to be cruel now. Uh oh that's a fair ball. And Ozuna's on with one down. Second hit of the day for St. Louis. Ozuna, remember we showed the home runs. This ball almost hits the. It does, it does. hit the bag. Yep. Thought it almost hit it, and uh, really nothing you can do with this bad luck, or just hope you get to it quicker. Yeah, you saw Jamer Condelario talking to the third base umpire and saying, "Yeah, it hit the bag." De Jong, 17 homers on the year. Got to be ready. Not much action in that field today, right? Can tend to lull you to sleep a little bit. You, you get a pitcher that dominates like that, and to really force yourself. What am I going to do if the ball's hit to me right now? Yeah, you almost get caught watching former work. This one pounded left and foul. Got in his kitchen there. Some firewood for some young man. Yeah, broke a bat. It's always a good sign if you're a pitcher, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Not going to go very far if you break it. These are just the times you just got to things are going to get more strategic. Down to the last. Eight outs St. Louis Tigers have nine in the regulation game. Wide of third and a whale of a play by Condelario couldn't get it out of his glove though. Now we talk about the little things. Marcel Ozuna did a real good job. He got to second quickly. So look at Candy. He's thinking he's got to rush it. He feels that internal clock a little bit. He just can't get the grip. Michael thought he had a double play. Five of the last eight Cardinals have now reached base after Michael Fulmer had a perfect game through five. He's going to have to manage it. Got to make sure your defenders. Well, look at Ozuna right here. He gets a good jump. Gets a good secondary jump, but he gets down here. Look at it. He's just the way he's so close. And Candy's thinking, I got to get the first. And he feels that little bit of a rush, but he doesn't have the grip. Well, what am I missing there? Because I didn't see an all out bear down by Ozuna to go into second I just, on that ground. I just think with Candy out of peripheral vision, when he looked over at second, he felt Ozuna was fairly close from his view. And we're looking on the camera, okay? And it's much different. And we didn't have the ball in our glove. So he just was going to go get the safe out over at first base, which is not a bad play. But in doing so, just couldn't yeah. complete the task. Yeah, I was referring more to Ozuna and his. It seemed like there was a lack of urgency getting to second base on that ground ball. Maybe I'm wrong. Colton Wong swings at the first pitch and follows it back. Flew to left, flew to right. Well, again, this is not. I'm not trying to make 
make it like sound like it's easy to make every play. I'm just I've been in those situations where you feel that little urgency in your inner self and it affects the play. Fulmer needs a ground ball. 87 pitches. 95 miles an hour on the heater. First time he's gone six innings or more since July 3rd, Michael Fulmer. Matthew Boyd, so special last night. Career high 11 strikeouts. Tied for the most by a Tiger starter this year with Jordan Zimmerman. And Matthew Boyd allowing just one run on two hits and one walk. And set the standard. I, I, I promise you, pitchers compete with each other. Michael Fulmer says, I'm going to go, go uh, repeat what. Matt did last night. Can he learn from what Matthew Boyd did last night? Even well, though one's a righty and one's a lefty? He's learning right now. He's dug in. He's committed to getting out of the inning. Punch through the left side. Ozuna rounding third. Matuk's throw home. Waiting for McCann and he's in there. Well, Mikey does everything he can. Juan just, Juan just finds a open spot. Mikey right here, the throw just not in time. And a good slide right here. Look at uh, low to the ground right there on the plate. And Michael Fulmer faced with second, third, one out. Tigers are going to have to bring the infield in. And you like with Jairo Munoz, who's the on deck batter for the Cardinals, now at the plate, was doing to help Ozuna as he rounded third, trying to help him on what's going on. This one flown to right. Goodrum misplayed it. One run will score. Long will hold it third. And a misplay in right allows Munoz to take second. It's 2 0 Cardinals. Yeah, just running. I think the eyes are bouncing a little bit. You can see it slicing on him. Maybe he got ahead of himself a little bit trying to do the reverse pivot. Just uh, didn't get get it where he thought it was, and the runners are reading the play. You see the tag up and on to score. He got action in the bullpen. Goodrum making his seventh start in right field. Allows the inning to extend a little bit more and with an intentional walk to Greg Garcia Carson Kelly who had the first hit of the day off Michael Fulmer stands in going for the double play. So just look at this inning. Michael's dominant comes out, gives up a hit to Ozuna. Doesn't that hit the bag? It did. Hits the bag. You know, could you make that play? Sure, but it's pretty tough. Then the young. He hits a tricky, tricky one. Wong hits a good one. Then a misplay by Gudrum. So it's not justice all the time. Alcantara is up throwing for the Tigers now. Just in case here in the seventh. I say it all the time. Keep it at two runs. And if you're Ron Gardner you're hoping that your starter can get out of this inning with two runs and you can get two runs and have him spit the hook. Kelly hit six of his seven minor league homers off right handed pitchers. When he was with Memphis, where he batted 269 and drove in 41. Waits on a 1 2 pitch. Good stop by McCann. Suddenly the pitch count is at 95. 
And you got to fight. You're you're the pitcher. You're the catcher. You're the player. You got to fight the disappointment right now. Again, it's not as bad as it looks here in the seventh inning. Plenty of room to come back and win this game if you keep it close. Runnels will be on the move now. Through the hole. And another infield base hit for the Cardinals. Going to be it probably. Not fair, is it? No. Incredible. Yeah, <laughs> really is. Through a heck of a game. Sure did. Five hits allowed, three runs, leaves with the bases loaded. Sometimes this game. Is really unfair. Game summary, Michael Fulmer allows the five hits. Four of those, though, coming in this frame. All five coming in the last two. He had a perfect game through five. John Gant matched him and has been dynamite all day long. Now it's up to the Tigers' bullpen to hold it close. Here's our wall side windows pitching change. Victor Alcantara. Well, Victor's been very good. 22nd game, throws a lot of, a lot of strikes. Had one or two games where he had a little hiccup, but other than that, it's been uh, really impressive. His task again: get out of this inning. Tigers trail three nothing. Matt nope. Carpenter, the top of the order and the National League leader in home runs. This guy's one to center. Jones hustling in, making the grab, and then throwing to third wisely. The Cardinals played another on the sack fly by their leadoff man. Broke back just a little bit right there. But he gets the call deep enough. Matt Carpenter doesn't swing at the first pitch. That may be the first time this whole series. Get the men on base and scores easily. It's Munoz. Not out of it yet. Jose Martinez, the ninth hitter. In the inning for St. Louis. Oh. 
One and zero. Oh. And this is a big out. Got to control. Big Joe Jose Martinez. Martinez with runners in scoring position in two outs. Gibby first in the majors in hits with 27, and average with 458. Gaudy numbers. Two and zero. Oh. Matt Adams on deck. Adams let off the inning with a strikeout. It looked like Michael was on his way. No doubt. And a, then a ground ball hit the bag. Scalded wide of third. Another base hit. And another run scores for St. Louis. Boy, I tell you, they're finding the holes, aren't they? Sure are. That was it pretty well, though. Remember the numbers we gave you with runners in scoring position and two outs. That's his 28th hit, leads the majors. Yep, but I mean, it just finds a hole in between shortstop and third base here. It was hit hard. In one of those innings. Cardinals trying to get back at the Tigers for getting. Beating, getting beat for the first two games. Here's Matt Adams. A couple of strikeouts and a fly to center. Caught the oh. corner. Harrison Bader, the pinch runner for St. Louis. For Martinez. He's going to go play the outfield. They're going to shore their defense up. Oh, and two to Matt Adams. Good action on that fastball. You can just see the pitches that get put in play and the pitches that don't get put in play. Look at the sink, the late sink on this ball right here. Just disappears. It's hard to hit that ball. If you do, it's going to be right into the ground. Tapped foul. You can see they're trying to work Adams down and away. He's had a decent career at St. Louis before he went out and now he's back. Yeah, went out to Washington, came back. Talked to him on Friday, said, I'm just trying to fit in here. Just want to help in any way I can, understanding the role that he plays. Not the everyday player that he was first time around in St. Louis. Held off. One and two. Been a long inning for the Tigers. No doubt. Got to get back in the dugout. Nick, Gudrum, Matuk. Let's think about getting some runs right now before we get this out. Golf to second. Lugo's right there. Five runs, five hits, three infield hits for the Cardinals. We stretch. With the Tigers down five zip. Coming up, the Consumers Energy seventh inning stretch.
Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. Come to Comerica. By your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDetroit.com and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by wall side windows. We can do that. We are the factory. That 68 team celebrated all weekend long. 103 wins back in 1968. Coming back from a 3-1 deficit. Beating the Cardinals alongside Kirk Gibson, Johnny Kane, John Keating. I'm Matt Shepard. Glad you're with us on this Sunday afternoon. We've talked a lot about Michael Fulmer. He was perfect through five. But John Gant, for maybe the third time in his career, will throw through seven innings as he faces the Tigers here in the seventh. What's well, giving him the most trouble? Well, he's just got great stuff. Uh, again, he's 6'4", he's 6'5". Uh, he's, six six he's got a good ride on his fastball when he throws it up. Good action on his ball when he throws it down in that that changeup, they call it a changeup, is like the Vulcan grip. It's been very, very effective. This is his previous three games, he's had one earned run scored on him. Okay, so it's not like he's stumbling into a game today. This is the fourth straight game where he's dominated his opponent. Yeah, he's got 16 straight innings of no earned runs allowed. Tigers try and break through here. Mindset of his team. Now you're seeing him for the fourth time through now, or third time through. What's the mindset of a club? Well, it's Harrison Bader, by the way, taking over in center field. It's it's different for everybody. I mean, you, you, you're you going to battle just like you have so far. He's made the pitches. Um, you need to put it in play. The Tigers had an unfortunate inning there. They had a lot of ground balls, really, to be, to be honest, that made it through the infield. So continue to try and be in the right spot. Continue to try and anticipate. Watch where the ball's going. Get, lean in the right way. Pick it up and try and make your outs and then the offensive side you just got to get a good pitch. Castellanos one of two hits for Detroit. The other was a bunt single from Nico Goodrum. I'm going to tell you that in the back of their heads there's that some of the Tiger hitters are thinking about that changeup because it's really been good today. His secondary stuff that could have been one right there. So that's in the back of your head. You're trying to get it, but it is. They'd probably not seen one like this. That's a slider right there. So he hasn't thrown hardly any sliders at all today. It's basically fastball and the changeup. Castellanos inside the bag. Could be a second double of the day for Nicholas Castellanos, and it will be a ground rule double. That one skipped up into the front row. Good way to start the seventh here for Detroit. And Nick's just a good hitter, isn't he? Sure yeah. is. He's really fun to watch. Yeah, and he's uh, everybody's had trouble with John Gant. But, but Nick, uh, that, that one's up in the zone a little bit. He doesn't miss it. Just over the bag. And he hustles out of the box for an easy double. You just got to make sure you don't get doubled off here now. You're down by five runs. So that's a great double, great lead off the inning, but you can't get doubled off on a line drive. Stay close. Make sure you, you score if you get the hits. Good room. First pitch swinging. Can't able to cover. The runner moves 90 feet. One down. You won't want to miss Michigan Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony Friday, Saturday, or Friday, September 28th at the soundboard at Motor City Casino. Join us as we celebrate B.J. Armstrong, T.J. Duckett, and many others. Tickets start at just $25. For tickets and information, visit mshof.org. T.J. Duckett's going in this year. He is. Another Michigan Stater, huh? Yeah, he's a Spartan. Grew up in Kalamazoo. Battering ram. Ah, took up the box. Cardinals will concede the run. Detroit's on the board, but there's two down. And Mikey trying to jump him. Keep it going. Well, so did Goodrum. Oh, yeah. And of course, St. Louis with the five run lead. They're going to concede an out for the run right now. Could see the run for an out, I should say. Said that backwards. Well, that does beg the question. With a guy who's on the mound, and he's thrown as many innings as he has, and thrown as many pitches as he's thrown, and you're trying to get something going, and you're trying to make it a little bit easier for your team when they go back out there, 
Victor Martinez told you and I the other day, look, I'm trying to teach these young guys after a long inning in the field, you got to give your pitching staff, you got to give your players a chance to take a breath. So let's not be swinging the first pitch. Don't do that. And yet Detroit had two batters do that. Were those good at bats or poor at bats? In well, it's easy for us to say because there's a domination going on on the mound. So, okay, you take him and you're down 0-1-0-2, right? So, I mean, you've got to measure that. You've got to make decisions on your own. You're trying to get the run in and get a hit. I think maybe the data would show that you have a better chance if you get a good pitch early. You can maybe get something a little straighter, which they did. And you have a chance to get the runner in and get on base yourself. It's just a decision they've made. It's not like the guy's wild, right? You, you get a pitcher on the mound that's wild. It's a little different. You don't want to help him. You, now, if what you're saying is, is correct as well. If you take some pitches... You run his pitch count up, maybe you get him out of there. But this St. Louis bullpen, they're going to have some pretty good arms coming out of there as well. So, you, you know, it's, a, it's a, a fair question. It can change from situation from situation to situation, from game to game. And you listen to your manager on that. McCann sneaks one down the right field line. That's into the corner. And that's going to be a double. Second double of the inning for Detroit. Third extra base knock of the game for the Tigers and with two down they're looking for more. Yeah here's the big at bat here Ronnie. Tucked it just inside the line right here. Look at how it tails. Right into the stands ground rule double. Here's your guy. Ronnie yeah. Rodriguez big at bat right here. Big fly would go good. He's going to get something off speed here right out of the gate. So you know he's aggressive. That's what you're looking for? I think it's what he's going to get, yeah. Good stop by Kelly behind the plate. You know, some hitters will sit on a certain pitch. Um, the changeup, I think, you, that he throws, if you sat on it, it would still be hard to center because it's been down virtually every time he throws it. He hasn't been hanging it. You, when pitchers get a little tired, they start to elevate their pitches. You're not seeing that from John Gant. Climb the ladder, 2 0. 93 mile an hour fastball. Last time Gant threw seven innings in a game was against Cleveland in July or June rather end of June. Speaking of Cleveland Tigers will be down to Cleveland is it next week next weekend right. Houston's in town for three straight Thursday is an off day and then it's a three game road series in Cleveland tough stretch sure is at the Cardinals you got the Astros and then the, the Indians. Ooh. Later on, got to go to Milwaukee to end the year. Brewers are playing good ball. They've been in it all year. They're starting to make believers. There you see the 2 0 change up to Ronnie. Is that a gutsy pitch, 2 0? No, I mean, they know that he's going to be aggressive, which okay. you want to be if you're a hitter. So they just took something off it. He got a four run lead. I think they got a little something to work with. So that's why they cho chose to go that way. Pounded in the corner. McCann's going to score. Rodriguez digging for two. He's going to make it easily. The Tigers aren't done yet. Two out traffic on the base paths and two runs home. Looks like a changeup finally getting up in the zone and he pulls it down inside the corner. Suna, that's a tough play down there. Wouldn't have got McCann at home anyway. Tigers get one more, two, five, two. That's gonna be it for John Gant. 
We've got a wall side windows pitching change with the Tigers two runs on the board. We'll tell you about the new thrower when we come back. Kane picking Nicholas Castellanos with the first choice proved to be a wise move. Go give, ahead. Me your, give me your on the right side. Well, Keith, go, you, go you, ahead. Keith, you have such a, a cushion as you remind us on a pretty regular basis. <laughs> you can afford to wear the green jacket, right? Minus well, three. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't mind telling you that. Well, you're going to fix your short game a little bit. Here's Dakota Hudson, the new pitcher for the Cardinals. Our wall side windows pitching change. What's the scouting report on this young man, Gibby? Well, he's a fastball slider cutter. 96 miles an hour in the fastball. Likes his cutter, 92 miles an hour. Kind of a power guy coming at, coming at you. They're going to bring their best right now. They're up 5-2. All the pitchers coming out of the Cardinal bullpen right now, they're going to try and win this game. Another one of those big guys out of the bullpen, 6'3, 215. Since he made his major league debut on July 28th, he ranks ninth among National League pitchers in opposing batting average and 12th in appearances. This is his 19th appearance since being called up. See, he really gets the arm up tall. The cutter will just break late and away from the righty. The slider looks like he's got more depth. Going to get good lateral break and vertical. Going to go down. Late and sharp. Don't try and pull him. Try and go the other way or middle. Good stop by Carson Kelly. Wonder how the catchers do it sometimes. I do, yeah. Look, he gets that glove real close, as close to the ball as you can. Short hops don't. They don't go. Uh, uh, you know, they don't go errant. Get that glove real close to him, so it can't take a bad hop on you. Full count now to Dual Lugo. See Lugo, he was wondering, he's waiting to hear. Yeah. Got the call. Questionable there. Can be a cutter here. Walked him. Manage your dream team in franchise mode, plus get weekly stats, roster updates, and more. RBI Baseball 18 is available now. Learn more at rbigame.com. Rated E for everyone. Tied run on base. And Jacoby Jones has squared the ball both times. They throw him high fastballs. 
and breaking balls or hard sliders. Looks like a cutter right there. Now if you're Jacoby, you want to know where that pitch needs to, where it normally starts. So if you're looking for the cutter, it's going to have to start at you a little bit to be down the middle of the plate. Popped it foul. Oh, I missed that. Tiger crowd was restless. Now they're into it. Wait for something good to happen. Sun wants to peek through. Getting bright out. Could use it. Grounded to short. De Young on a shortstop. And the easy play made at second. But the Tigers do play it a couple. And when we come back, Johnny Keynes takes us back to 1983. A couple of Tigers debuted on this guy's show. What do you hear? We're watching Tigers baseball, Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire. Right field, as they say, you can't beat fun at the old ballpark. Who knew it was the ninth annual Magnum PI Day? It's not officially sponsored by the Tigers, but these guys are hoping that maybe one day we can. So we have Tom Selleck of all shapes and sizes, including Shanna Kelly, the proprietor. How did this all come about? Well, it was a group of us talking one night, and uh, you know, Magnum PI is an avid Tigers fan, so we made a Magnum PI Day. All right, who's all here? Oh, we have lots of family and friends. There's 36 of us today. Okay, 36 members. And Shep, you may remember this, that uh, unofficially, Tom Selleck finished fourth in the MVP voting on the Tigers without ever actually playing in a game. Do you remember that Alan Trammell yes. and Lou Whitaker starred I was in 1983? Yeah. I was leaving that for you. I was leaving yeah, that I, for you. How good do these guys look, huh? They, they look really good. Are, are you growing a mustache anytime soon, Johnny? Hey, my dad wears one proudly, as does my brother. <laughs> and if we talk to the big wigs at Fox, I'd love to grow one. It, 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 does, it never works Gibby for had me. a great one. Yeah, he uh, did. Gibby's, Gibby's looks great. Yeah, Gibby's, no, look, Gibby's got the scruff on the beard, too. That always looks good, too. I can't do that. But you can't scruff it. Why not? I can't. It just it just doesn't look good. You've got to get utensils to get it the right length. Did you ever give Tram and Whitaker grief for that 83 appearance? Do you remember? No, no. We thought that was cool. And Tom Selleck came out to, for batting practice on more than one occasion. So we um, took care of him. What did you think of their uh, acting debuts, though? I thought I mean, they did good. Where they said, sorry about that, my man. The beers are on us. Here's our business cards. Grounded to Candelario. But but seriously, Selleck, we put him in right field, and everybody just hit rockets at him. Said, so check, let's see how good your hands are, kid. <laughs> we hit rockets. He was running all over there. Was he? <laughs> he said, come on in. Come on in. You want to hit? Hey, we got a wall side windows pitching change. Sandy's bias up from double A Erie. 
thirty three games there you see the numbers one hundred and three innings goes very hard. Tigers like his arm. And uh, certainly somebody they're looking at towards the future. What will be his role moving forward in your mind. Well he started as a starter this year I think uh, more of a bullpen guy because he's got the velo he probably profiles towards the back end. Set up kind of guy. Could be could be set set up guy. Um, I think he started like 15 games down there in Erie. Six and a third starts yeah. yeah six six and a third scoreless innings over the last five appearances for Baez. He gives up a base hit here to Paul DeYoung. Second hit of the day for the Cardinals shortstop. What do you think the biggest adjustment is for young pitchers when they come up to the majors. I think it's the same. Uh, the awe of being in the big leagues it's exciting you can't believe it. That's one of the reasons the Tigers have brought him up this year they want to kind of try and accelerate that whole process. So when they get here they give him a little sniff you know, next year they'll probably go to winter ball somewhere okay. playing the Dominican or any other place. Get some more innings on him then he'll have a rest and he'll be ready to go. Hopefully have a great spring and then uh, you know they'll he'll be part of the solution. How many innings are too many though for a guy like this between the minors the majors and then winter ball. Well they give him a little break. And then uh, they they would have him go down and play in winter ball. They'd have an innings limit probably a lot of the younger guys go to winter ball and play earlier in the season. Okay. They got uh, Jacob Robson Jacob Robson I think is uh, going to go down there as well. You just kind of tailor it and you tell them how many innings you, that you want them to throw and, and generally they'll get a little rest. You know you got to have some type of rest. You just can't pitch every day. Although I'll bet you Baez is thrown pretty much his whole life almost year round. It's where you get the arm strength as well. It's a, it's a fine line. Long pops it up foul two and two now. To the Cardinals second baseman he's made some really nice plays in the field but equally as many good plays in just backing up first base and making sure the Tigers don't get an extra bag a valuable player for this ball club. Yeah he's he's not a loafer that's for sure. His style points are being there when you're supposed to be there. Got him looking. Well, not a call third strikes. Hey fans, the Houston Astros come to town tomorrow night. Join us beginning at 530 for Tigers Live. Tomorrow, that's Tigers and Astros tomorrow night, 530, right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Justin Verlander will get the starting nod for Houston. And it'll be Francisco Liriano due to throw for Detroit. Liriano having a good start in his last outing. Houston 89 knockouts on the year 49 on the road. They like the road. No team has a bigger scoring differential than the Houston Astros. They are a plus 240. And they've won seven in a row. So they're feeling it. At the right time. Got a baseball in center field. Came out of the bullpen. Jacoby Jones with a soft toss over the feet over the uh, fence there to resume play. One and oh. It's a good batter's eye out there. <laughs> it really is. Some of the parks aren't so good. You look at that from home plate, you see that it's nice and dark. Jairo Munoz. Q's one that was foul. Good job by Aducey. He was right on the line. Could only go be foul if he didn't get it. This ball just about fair. Hit the chalk, but scooted foul.
so close. Cardinals already have a single tonight by hitting the third base bag. They had that five run seventh. Five of their hits coming in that frame. Three of those infield hits, though. Two and one to Jairo Munoz, who moved from center to right in the last inning. Made room for Harrison Bader to go to center. The Cardinals have the lead. They have their one of the best defensive teams in there, trying to hold their hold on for a win, the three-run lead. Munoz batting 340 with runners on base, fifth best in the National League. Exactly what they needed here, a possible don't. I guess they're going to go right to first base. And they get him. Barely get him. All right, coming up next, we remember the Tigers rock behind home plate for the 68 Tigers. The great Bill Freehand. More on him. When Tigers and Cardinals continue on Fox Sports Detroit after this. Throughout the year, Bill Freehand, he had a little trouble with the bat right at first, and uh, then he got a couple of uh, hits to help us along. Bill, congratulations on being on the new world champion. Thank you, Ernie. It's a tremendous thrill. I, I thought maybe winning the, the pennant was the biggest thrill of my life, but I think I, I know this is. It's, it's beautiful. I, we've come back from behind all year, and we did it again. I never thought we could, but we did, and uh, I don't know. A lot of people must have been praying for us. Rather calm, subdued almost, Bill Freehand and locker room with the great Ernie Harwell there, celebrating 1968's World Championship team all weekend long. Bill Freehand, unfortunately because of Ill his illness, could not be with us, but what an incredible player he was for 15 years in a Tigers uniform as Condelario swings and fouls it off. And you, you saw the numbers, the gold gloves and the All-Stars, yes, but he held the major league record for highest career fielding percentage by a catcher until 2002. That's when Dan Wilson of the Mariners broke it and Bill Freehand became the American League's all time leader in put outs and chances back in 1974 when he passed Yogi Berra in that regard at the time. Well anyway you look at it, 10 all star games in a row I think it was 11 total it was in yes. the MVP voting one year he was uh, second got hit by some pitches too. He had a knack for that stood on the plate. Led the league two years in a row, 67 and 68. Yeah, 114 times he was hit by a pitch. He also caught 114 shutouts, Gibby. Something to be said for catcher's role in that regard, yes? I agree. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. He was you know, he was a kind of a tall, big, big fellow behind the plate. 
Just like we promised, it's time for the Miller Lite Hold True Moment. Bill Freehan in those classic uniforms, part of that 68 championship team, and so vital to you, their success. You love those road uniforms, don't you? Love them. Yeah. I would love to see that them one come right back. there. Yeah. What they wore yesterday. I'm telling you, when I saw that, and we'll pop up. Munoz, who's moved from right field to third base now, with Tyler O'Neill now taking over in right field. When I saw those yesterday, I just thought, man, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Why? Because you remember him that way, or it's just you, I just you think saw them and said, those are cool? I just think both. I just thought they were so cool. Mr. Hicks on the mound, throwing 102, 103 mile an hour. Gave it up to Candy the other day. Got a well side windows pitching change. Jordan Hicks. 67th game. He's got 70 innings. Good slider. 100. He averages about 102. With his pitches. Hicks gave up the game winning homer to Jamer Condelario Friday night. Third pitcher used by St. Louis. Get windier. The windows open. A little Christmas. Feels like football weather, doesn't it? And postseason baseball weather as well. Maybe that sun will pop out tomorrow for Houston. Lewis Coleman throwing in the Tigers bullpen. Probably coming in for the Tigers. Was talking some college football with Lewis before the game. LSU Tiger fan. How about that Red Wing cap? Red Wings will be at camp later on this week. Excited for that as Adutzi goes the other way, but foul. I'm excited to see Jeff Blaschel's team, that's for sure. Philip Zadina will be in camp. Michael Rasmussen, September 19th, Fox Sports Detroit. Ken Daniels, Mickey Redman, and the crew with the first broadcast. Who is the young the young player that's Philip to be Zadina. excited about? Philip Zadina and Michael Rasmussen. Maybe Philip Moronic defensively. They'll carry 7D. I would expect him to make it. Dennis Chalowski's in that mix too. Anybody tough guys or anything like that? We got goal scorers. You got to have goal scorers. You got to have good D guy. You got to have good tough guys. Yeah, I think. I mean, tough guys today are different than way back in the day when you played in the majors like Bobby Provert and Joey Koser were the yeah. tough guys, right? Tough guys that can skate you're looking for now. Yeah, I think Tyler Bertuzzi's a tough guy right in front of the net. That kind of player. Aducey goes down swinging. Giddy up. The Express. 101 miles per. That ball's moving. Look at it tail away. He's got underneath that. Can't expect to, to hit that. 101 on the outside. Hmm. You just hope you can foul it off and right. get some because you try and hit some of these pitches. You just can't shape him. There's no room for error. But you wonder, can the young kid, how can he last throwing the ball this hard? Castellanos, steadiest Tiger all season and the steadiest one on this Sunday afternoon. Two for three, a couple of doubles and a run scored. 48th multi hit game for Nick Castellanos. Sixth best in the American League. He's pretty analytical about how do, you, do I get the barrel to this ball. I mean, he knows it's it's coming in hot. Looks like maybe he backed off the plate just a little bit against Hicks. Jammed him 2-0. They all try to get in right there. Because you don't want home run hitters or at least power hitters good hitters to extend their arms right well and Nick's natural stroke is probably left center at the most center right center it's just harder to get it but he has a great swing path he drops that elbow that right elbow in tight and the bat comes right down to the ball oh that the ball outside is, corner that's that's a ball you can see that from behind You can see the catcher moving about four inches. Hey. 
got that call. Sure did. Three and one. Well, you know, many times umpires know they missed it. They really do. Do you think there's, a, there's ever been a makeup call? Yeah, I don't think intentionally, but I think subconsciously, yes. And, you know, they'll, they're, they're talking to those catchers all game. You know, maybe Nick's walking out of there and he said, hey, did I miss that one, that one pitch? Of course, if you're the catcher and it's not against you, you always say, no, good call. Say good call. Kill him with kindness. Well, I mean, you're trying to work him to your advantage, right? Sure. You don't want right. to, nobody wants to hear hear you tell him the truth that you're wrong. You blew the call. Till after the series. Yeah, maybe you see him out at the restaurant having a nice tea. Give him a, give him the heads up. Say, I think he was blocking you out. He sure takes his time. Good stuff, but not much location. There's Nick with another walk. On base three times, Nick Castellanos. Here's Nico Goodrum. And a one for three day. Love to see the rookie's 17th homer of the year right here. Get the tags within one. One pitch it looks like Nico's susceptible to is that one down and in off the plate. I've seen him hit some balls inside pretty good, but that one that's in off the plate, he seems to swing right over it, and they really go after him with a three-two three counts. Hicks didn't really look comfortable on the mound there when he finished. I think I said it yesterday. Guys that throw so hard, you worry about them all the time. They're such. Let's, let's play it through and watch his arm. How that recoils. And they have that throwing motion. You're throwing the ball forward, and then you have a recoil. Oh, it looks like he just slipped. It's gonna be okay. He actually follows through pretty good. Yeah, he didn't wince. He didn't look like he was in any pain. He just looked a little uncomfortable on the mound. But it was worth Mike Schilt having a conversation. And the Cardinals get that bullpen working again. Carlos Martinez up and throwing. The one pitch. Good room. Back to the mound. And an easy way to end the eighth. Let's go to the ninth. Tigers hoping for the sweep. They need outs and runs. That was never a problem for the 68 world champs. Call Sam update. It is the eternal question, and it is the essence of Tigers live postgame. What happened? 
We'll ask that question of Michael Fulmer, who deserved a better fate, was on his way to perhaps an historic start, but then things went sideways. Why did they go sideways? Uh, you'll hear from Michael Fulmer coming up on uh, Tigers Live. You'll also hear from Kristen Stewart, who finally got the call to the major leagues late last night, found his way to Detroit, and will take you through the process of telling everybody and the process of walking into a major league ballpark as a major leaguer for the first time on Tigers Live immediately after the conclusion of this one. But the ninth inning is ahead. Back we go to Gibby and Shep. Keith, you didn't think Kristen Stewart looked in awe when he was in there. You and I were talking to him, did Not you? Not at all. Yeah. No. Looked very comfortable. Don't seem delighted to be there. Yeah, well, when he gets under those lights, it'll be a little exciting first time. And nobody forgets that 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 moment. It's kind of like Keats when he went on the set the first time. Love the lights, right, Keats? Uh, scared to death here, here in, in, in Grand Rapids a thousand years ago. A thousand years ago. Interesting. But Ron Gardner here has said that Kristen Stewart will start against Justin Verlander tomorrow. He said he's going to play a lot, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. That's a good assignment for your first time, huh? Well, Keats, what did Ron Gardenhire tell us? He, he faced Nolan Ryan early in his yeah. career, right? Joe Sambito was the first guy that he faced a long right. time ago. Joe Sambito, the left-handed uh, reliever for Houston. And your story about wearing the uh, the cap with the adjustable band. And <laughs> that was classic, wasn't it? He wasn't going to take it off. He was that <laughs> delighted to be in the major leagues. He said, do you think I cared? I didn't care. <laughs> they were giving it to him pretty good. Yeah. At the Astrodome, that's how long ago it was. Right. So if you're a rookie right now, who is the the toughest pitcher you think you could face? JV's got to be up there. Oh, right? I would think so. Yeah. JV, uh, Sale, Chris Sale. Yeah, Sale would be really nasty. And the atmosphere should be electric tomorrow night here at the ballpark. I would hope so. It's been pretty good. I mean, this whole this whole weekend, uh, all all the celebrate celebratory stuff. The games have been great. And this game here, Tigers could still come back. Have three outs left. Got to get through this top half of the ninth with no damage. I don't think I'd want to face Jacob Degrom or Max Scherzer either. Yeah, Degrom, Scherzer, Verlander, Sale. Who would who'd fill out the top five? Uh, well, obviously you gravitate toward Kershaw a little bit. Yeah, he's been hurt this year, but yeah, he launched to center. No problem for Jacoby Jones. Lewis Coleman's had a good first couple of batters he's faced. Here's the upcoming pitching matchup presented by Wallside Windows. You see Verlander against Lariano, Jordan Zimmerman, Daniel Norris close things out. Garrett Cole started out great for Houston at the beginning of the year. Uh, still, his numbers still very impressive. Yeah, he's came over from Pittsburgh this year, and like you said, he really came out of the gate, but coming back to the pack a little bit, but. You know, everything that's happened up to this point, the, the pressure starts to build on all the playoff contenders and uh, gets interesting. A lot of good baseball left, a lot of interesting things can happen, exciting. And yeah, remember Francisco Liriano, who you saw moments ago there, he picked up his uh, first win since April 20th on Tuesday in Chicago. So he feels pretty good coming into the game. Carpenter slices it foul. Zach fly back in the seventh, but for the most part, as good as this guy is, and he's really good, the Tigers have held him in check. Just two hits in the series. Because we built him up right out of the gate, remember? Do, do we have that power, Gibby? Is that, <laughs> is that all us? Well, it's just speculation. Somebody was upset with me on social media because I said Michael Fulmer was throwing a perfect game through four. He didn't. And uh, they thought I jinxed him unknowingly, apparently, that he had a perfect game through five as well. We don't have that kind of power. You said first, uh, would you say first base runner? Right. First base runner on the wall. Nice job uh -oh. by Coleman to close it out. Matt Carpenter, who's had a frustrating weekend, doesn't like it at all, and is letting Lance Barrett know about it. Tigers need runs. They're down by three. Stay with us.
it continues, Matt Carpenter won't be part of the Cardinals lineup. Here's why. That ball's probably four or five inches off the plate. Matt Carpenter has had a rough. You see him arguing right now. He's had a tough series. He finally had to let some of it go, and I don't, I don't. He says that's terrible. I'm warning you, stop. All right, get out of here. <laughs> I gave him three chances. It's true. He gave him a chance. Then uh, here comes Mike Stilts. And Mike Schilt gets thrown. Mike Schilt, yeah. Two for 14, Matt Carpenter. So there's a little bit of frustration in there, and uh, it all boils down to that. Tigers, though, have three outs. Could that have, do you think that would have happened had they not been up 5 2? If they were down by a runner tied, maybe not. I don't, I, I just think, uh, I, I don't really know Matt Carpenter. He didn't really lose his temper, he just had a point to make, and he'd had enough. Yeah, I, overall, I will say the umpires around the league, I think, have really come a long way in trying to stop that type of confrontation. They really have been very lenient that I've seen to watch people have their say, players have their say. Five, six, and seven hitters for the Tigers do up. Mikey Matuk, James McCann, and Ronnie Rodriguez scheduled. Ron Gardenhier does have Kristen Stewart on his bench. He has Victor Martinez on his bench in case they want to pinch hit. Matuk skies one shallow right. Wong will take care of business. One down. And Kristen Stewart is going to pinch hit for Ronnie Rodriguez. He's on deck. The first James McCann. There's mom and dad. Oh boy. Butterflies ready to jump out of their mouths. Never heard that one before. Well, it's in their stomach right now. It's, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's right. And Kristen Stewart told us when, when somebody asked him earlier, number 14, any significance? No, that's just the number they gave me. <laughs> Jim Schmankel says, here you go. Here's number 14. But it can become one. Who was the last player to for wear 14? Who was it last year? Remember? Dave Bergman was a 14. For you, yeah. Alex Presley wore it last year. Slow tap at a third. Munoz across the diamond. Two down. And here's Kristen Stewart. Who looks the most nervous? Dad. He did. I was thinking the same thing. Live it up, man. Soak it up. So cool. I did ask Kristen Stewart, who's the bending ear for you? When times may get frustrating, when you don't get a chance to get what you want, when things aren't going well, he says, my father calls his dad. And rarely do they talk about baseball, talk about life, talk about getting through certain times. A lot of power here, folks. 25 bombs in the minors this year, 30 the year before. Oh. Then on the plate, uh, borderline, he probably wanted to take a strike anyway. One and one. This is an at bat you know, any 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 player will never forget. This is a good and very smart for Guardian to do because it'll take a little bit of the edge off tomorrow. Two and one. Stewie, that's good. Laying off that. Really important for a certain managers to get young players into the lineup right away. Leland was like that. Garden hire is like that. Good hack at that one. Two and two. It didn't look like he's trying to hit a single here. Helmet popped off. 
2 2 pitch to Stewart. It's full. You'd think you'd get a fastball here. 5 2, but Stewie's no different. It's your first at bat. You got to shorten up, battle your way on. The payoff pitch. Popped up left side. Munoz will take care of business. And the Cardinals salvage one from the weekend series. 5 2 the final. We'll send it now to the Call Sam Studios. John Keating standing by for Tigers Live Post Game. All right, Matt, thank you. A little glimpse into the future right there with the last hitter in a 5 2 loss for the Tigers against the Cardinals as they win game three of the series. Overall, pretty good weekend for the Tigers. And coming up on Tigers Live, we'll talk about the up and down nature of the day for Michael Fulmer. Kristen Stewart made his debut, as you just saw. He'll talk about getting that call and the process of walking into a major league ballpark. And you'll hear from Ron Gardenhire, 